So now in the second part of this video, we're going to look about at how to use those images to create a smoke effect. So the first thing uh, I'm going to do is in fact use a compositing network. So I'll just lay down a manager and this is going to be convert to outline. So what I'm just going to do here is load in a those motion uh, images that we rendered out in the last video. So let's have a look at those. Oops, wrong. There we go. So we can see these are the these are the images we we rendered out earlier. And fortunately, these have an alpha channel, which is an outline of the of the animation, like so. Actually, let me just uh, make sure that my animation is going up to frame 100. So let's uh, let's apply that and then close it down. Right. So this is the outline, and what we want is a series of images which uh, which are in fact this outline. So let me just take a channel copy. And all we need to do is to copy into the color channel uh, the alpha channel. So that's going to mean that this is now in our color channel. This, this outline is now in our color channel. And then we can output these through to a, we can output them through to a file and as it happens I've already rendered these out and I've called them outline.f.pic so those are in fact already on disk so the next thing uh, we can do is create a geometry object which I'm going to call outline and let's dive inside I'm just going to delete this file object uh, because I'm going to use something called a trace sop. And a trace sop is a way of converting an outline that's contained in an image into a piece of geometry. So let's load in our outline and then have a look at our scene view. And we can see that we've got the outline and that's now a piece of a piece of geometry in fact. And we can see the points around the edge of it. And there's a hell of a lot of points there. I probably don't need that many. So here on the filters tab, I can resample and I can increase the step size, say, to six or something like that. And that now gives us just 300 points, which is a bit more, a bit more like it. Uh, the other thing I want to do when I'm loading in this trace operation is to click this box here, add point texture. Now, one of the things you often want to do uh, with a trace op is to take the outline from the image and then to collect other bits of data from the image. And in this case, of course, we want to uh, use the same image or rather the, the motion vector version of it to load in the motion vectors as attributes on these points. So I want to add a point texture and you can see this now gives me, uh, in fact, you probably can't see that, it's just enlarge this. This now gives me a UV attribute which we can use to extract data from the motion vector image because the motion vector image is completely aligned with that outline image that we've got. So let's crack on and, and use that and I'm going to use a VOPSOP. Uh, you could also use an attribute wrangle here but I think it's slightly easier to understand using a VOPSOP. And the VOPSOP is going to allow us to use VOP nodes to manipulate uh, the data, the, the attributes on these points. So let me enlarge this so that we can see it. And we're actually going to create two bits of data on these points. We're going to create uh, some a velocity attribute, which is going to be our motion vector. And we're also going to create an attribute, which is the, the size of that motion vector. And the reason we're going to do that is because, in general, we're not going to want smoke to be emitted in areas where there is no motion vector, where there is no motion. So anyway, let's let's crack on with this. 
So the first thing I need to do is bring in those UV coordinates. So I need a parameter node and I need to make it invisible. And that means it's going to try and collect the data that's going to go into this parameter from data that's on the points that we're feeding in rather than from the parameter interface. Uh, now we must make sure that we call it the same as the data that is on the points and those are called UV and so it just doesn't matter in fact what we what we call it here I'll just call it UV and in fact those uh, that UV data is three floats but when I come to use it uh, I'm going to need to have it in the form of uh, the, the vector rather the three floats have to be converted into their individual values and the reason I need to do that is because I'm going to use a texture. So let me get rid of that by hitting P to get rid of that parameter interface. So the first float here is going to be our S texture coordinate and the second float is our T texture coordinate and I'm going to promote the name of the texture and I'm also going to promote uh, the filter width just in case we need that. So this is uh, hopefully going to produce a motion vector. And what are we going to do with the motion vector? Well, as you can see from this outline, of course, this is basically a two-dimensional shape. Uh, we're going to have a smoke simulation that's more or less two-dimensional. Uh, and that means uh, that we're not going to need the motion vector in the Z direction. We're just going to need the motion vectors in the X and Y directions. So let's just have a look at that. Uh, where are we? Let's go back to our box op. Disconnected that by mistake. Right. Enlarge this again. So the next thing I want to do, therefore, is eliminate that component that we don't need. So let's uh, lay down a multiply swap and put in the motion vector and then I'm going to promote this parameter here and I'm going to hit P to bring up the parameter editor and I'm going to I just clicked that little nodule there which is bringing up this second parameter and I want this to be a vector and I'm going to call it say vector scale like so and I think if I remember right that the component that we're going to want to discard is the Z component because the, there's no thickness in that direction so here we want to have this default as a 1 in the x direction, a 1 in the y direction, and a 0 in the z direction. I'm also going to promote a parameter here, uh, which I'm going to click on that nodule. Whoops. So just click on that nodule there. And I get this other parameter, which is going to also be multiplied. And I'm just going to call this scale and we're going to give it a float value of 1. And that's just going to be a way of, of sort of uniformly scaling the rest of the motion vector that's left after we've multiplied it to eliminate the Z coordinate. And that's basically all we need to create our V attribute. Well, we don't, as I say, we don't just want a V or velocity attribute. Um, what, we, what we also want is an attribute which is going to give the length of that. So let me lay down a length parameter. Now, in fact, uh, I probably don't want this multiplied by the scale. So let's just get rid of that disconnected. I'm going to introduce another multiply node there, and I'm going to multiply it by the scale in a second step. And here, and I can hide the input node, which, which just reduces it down to that little nodule. So we're doing this in two stages because I want to feed this product into the length node before it's been scaled. And 
then I'm going to multiply this and again I'm going to promote the parameter and I'm going to click on that nodule and I'm going to call this emission scale and again I'm going to give this a value of 1. So that's going to allow us to this is going to allow us this this multiply here is going to allow us to control how much initial velocity the smoke is given and this uh, scalar here is going to allow us to control how much smoke is emitted. Now at the moment this isn't going into anything so I need to create an attribute for this to go into and in fact the attribute that controls how much smoke is produced is called density. So I need to lay down a parameter and I need to call this density and it's going to be a float parameter. Now since I'm going to and in fact let me do this a different way let me get rid of that and let me instead use the add attribute node which is a bit quicker so let me connect the data through to here and the attribute we're going to add is going to be density. So that's going to create a density attribute on our on our points. So let's just check that that's all worked. So if we have a look here, so we can see again you probably can't see here but we can see here that we've got density and velocity attributes. The final thing I'm just going to do on this is to use this to visualize um, the extent of the of the velocity uh, and I can do that by using a color mix node and we can use this to drive the bias and it's just we can have any colors we want here let me choose a, a, a green perhaps here or something some two distinct colors and that'll give us color. Uh, it doesn't matter, the color is not going to be used. Uh, and we can stick that into CD. And that's just going to mean that we can visualize how much there is, how much motion there is on each point. So let's reduce that. Now we can see already we're getting some of that uh, color. It's a little bit there. So I think we're going to need to increase the emission scale quite a bit. So there we go, that's starting now. We can see we're getting some green in some places and there we go. In fact, we really want the points. So let me just lose an add sop here. And the add sop is going to allow me not to add something, but in this case, take it away. I can just delete the points. And let me just delete that. Now we can see a bit more clearly here the points that are green are the ones which have motion attached to them and the points that are purple do not and that's interesting because the head appears to be collecting motion and the hips here are not so we'll have to investigate what's going on there and of course there's a good reason that that is happening and it's because we've still got the default texture map here so we need to change this so that it's picking up the, the motion vector. So what we should now see, right, and the reason this is all yellow is because we haven't got a big enough scale here, I suspect. So there we go. So if we increase that scale, say, to 50, uh, we can see that we're getting motion here and here. The other thing we can do is with your cursor over this middle screen, you hit D, and you'll get the display options. Let me get those back to the right size. Something seems to be going here, wrong here. I'm just trying to move these and it's not working for some reason. Um, let me see. Anyway, well, there we go. So we can add custom uh, variables that we can visualize on screen. And these buttons along here allow you to, to add them and they represent the different types of variable that you can have. 
Now, in this case, uh, we've got uh, a variable which is a velocity variable. You won't be able to see this, but uh, it's three float values. It's a vector. So this is this little dash thing here it means add a vector. So we can call it v. The attribute is v. And we can leave the scale at 1 for the moment. So that's going to create this v attribute that we might be able to visualize. So let me close that down. And if we go down here to this uh, little button here, we can write, we can click on it, and then we can select v. And that's giving us little, little velocity. You could just see them there. And in fact, we can increase them by increasing this scale here. So we can see that's the velocity. So that's going to be the initial velocity of our smoke that's being emitted from here. And there's a bit being going to be emitted from here too. So let's uh, set up the attributes that we're going to need to create our smoke. So let me lay down a null. And let's call it um, I don't know, points or something, something that will tell us that that is the end of that chain of nodes which are creating the data we need to emit the smoke. So the next step uh, is to create a container for our smoke. Now I'm going to use uh, a smoke container rather than a pyro container. You can use a pyro container, uh, but the smoke container will just be a little bit clearer what's going on, I think, if we use that, because it's less complicated. Now apparently, as you can see here, nothing's happened because we can't see the smoke container, but the reason that is the smoke container is actually enormous compared to a traced figure. So what I'm actually going to do is go back into this, and before the null, I'm going to insert a transform node, and I'm going to scale this up like so, so it's filling most of the box. That'll do. And we also want to adjust uh, the scale of the box, so we can do that here. We lay out these nodes by hitting the L key. If we go into the auto dot network and click on our smoke node, this is the thing that controls the size here. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is just release, it's reduce this in the Z direction down to one. So it's not going to be quite uh, two-dimensional. We're going to have a bit of thickness to the smoke, but uh, the the smoke is going to be much more varied in the x and y directions. So the other thing I'm going to do is, is decrease down the division size. This depends a bit on your on your capacity of your machine. Uh, you may want to start off by having quite a large division size and shape your simulation. Uh, I'm going to start here at 0.05, which gives us, let me just right click this. Uh, it doesn't seem to be giving us the size of the size of the smoke container, but it will do it here. So that's telling me that's 100 by 100 by 20. You, you can, again, you can't actually see that. If I click up here, perhaps you can see just down here, 100 by 100 by 20. Um, and probably when you come to render, you're going to want about 200, 250 by 250 to have a decent uh, render of this of this simulation. But for the moment, let's keep it there because that'll be a little bit quicker to render, uh, to to visualize as we go through this. Okay, so how do we get uh, from our outline to some smoke in this container? Well, fortunately, there's a tool that lets us do this pretty much straight away. And it's in the Populate Container tab, and it's Source from Points. So if I select my outline, click Source from Points, it will then invite me to select a fluid box. So I can just box select that and press Enter. And that's going to set up all the things we need to emit uh, smoke from those outlines. And we're going to want to tweak this quite a bit. All of the work is going on here in this Create Density Volume node, which has been added just after that points null that we that we made earlier. 
and the create density volume node is covered in much more detail in my video on smoke in Houdini 12 so I'm not going to go through it in, in vast detail. But let me start by concentrating first on the the emission of smoke, the density. So I'm going to turn off here on the velocity tab the visualization of velocity. And apparently uh, we don't have any density here. Now I can increase here the visualization scale and I can get a bit of density there visualized. And uh, in fact um, that is only changing the visualization. That's not going to change the emission of spokes. So the better thing to do is to go to our VOPSOP and here on this emission scale increase this even further and then reduce this here back to 1. The next thing we want to do is to have a look at the settings here. And we can see this has got a division size of 0 0.08 and my division size on my container is 0.05 so I want it at least that detailed. And if we reduce the division size on the main simulation you probably tend to want to reduce this as well. To, give, to get more detail. And the things that are, are going into this are the points. Uh, and what it's doing is it's taking each point and it's looking at a radius of 0.2 around it and it's creating volume out of that. Now in fact we want it to be more detailed so I'm going to make it 0 0.05 and uh, that should create, let me just turn off the noise for a second, that should create enough, there we go. So that is creating a certain amount of, of smoke. Um, we might want to up this again. So now that we've uh, got some, some density here in our source we need to add some velocity so let's have a look at that next uh, but first of all let me correct something uh, that I said earlier I said that this scaling factor here only affects the visualization of the smoke and in fact of course that's not true this is this is an overall scaling factor so it's going to combine with the scale that we're using here and the reason we're going to need a very high emission scale here is because our motion vectors are probably quite quite small relatively and therefore uh, we need to scale them a lot to get some smoke that we can see. Anyway, so let's have a look now at velocity. So let's go on to the velocity tab here of our create density volume node. And let's uh, visualize that. And I'm going to turn off the visualization of the smoke. And we can see we've got some fairly uniform movement here. And first of all, let me turn it down, I think, maybe to 0.5. And this will be the, the direct velocity vectors. Uh, so this is being imported directly. Um, now, what we probably want is a little bit more random movement. So I'm going to add some curl noise. And that's obviously far too much, so let me scale that down a bit, start with 0.1. And we can see uh, that that's adding a little bit of noise. Let me, let me try 0.2. 0.2 looks good. And we can always uh, tweak this later on. So I think uh, this probably, probably is enough for the moment to test our, our smoke emission. So to do that, I'm going to turn off the render flag on this outline. And then let's dive down into the auto.network and hit L to lay it out. So I'm going to turn off resizing the container because that doesn't really make sense in this kind of simulation. So we've got our smoke object. Uh, we've got a smoke solver. Uh, we've got the 
source density from outline node, which is the thing that's bringing in those volumes that we just defined and adding them into the, the simulation. And we've got the smoke solver. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off gravity, because I think that uh, we probably don't need gravity here. The smoke shouldn't drift down to the ground. It's not that kind of simulation. The second thing we're going to need to do is to turn off the buoyancy lift here. Uh, this is the thing that counteracts gravity. Warm gas tends to move upwards. And by turning these two things off, all we're going to get is the volume, uh, the smoke rather, being uh, propelled forward by those velocity vectors that we saw earlier. So let me just play this through and see what it looks like. So we're getting a little bit of movement. That's actually looking quite interesting. And as we move through, we can see we get a little bit more detail. And it's certainly swirling enough. That's that's an interesting swirling pattern. One of the things, however, that's, that's probably going to happen after this has been running for a while is that we're going to see too much smoke and we're going to feel that this, it's, it's getting too distorted the smoke and, and we can't see really what's going on. And a way to combat this is to use a gas dissipate node. So let's lay one down. And you can plug this in at, at several points during our solve. We can plug it into several of these. I'm going to plug it in here along with the resize container node. And let's have a look at this gas dissipate. So the gas dissipate, what it's going to do is it's going to reduce the density of our, uh, reduce the intensity rather of our density field at every step. And there are two methods uh, by which it does that. One of which is called evaporation. And this is a smoothly interpolated curve which decreases the density over time. So let's just try that. Let's put that up to one. And let's see what that looks like. So we can see that's actually not, it's, it's dissipating so quickly that it's not producing any smoke. So let's put it down to point 0.2 and see what that looks like. So now we are getting some smoke and the smoke, what should happen is the smoke should gradually evaporate. And we can see these, these parts up here are fading away. Now we may think that the curl noise is a little bit intense on here and we can, let me just show you the, the difference if we turn off that, uh, that curl noise. So let's turn off the curl noise and let's uh, replay our simulation. And we can see that's slightly less interesting. So we need to tweak the curl noise to get the, the level of variation that we, that we think is sensible. So one of the things that uh, you may find unsatisfactory about this simulation is that sort of outline effect there. You can see the sort of outline of the hand. It's not, it's not full and that leaves sort of holes in the smoke here, which are probably not very desirable. So an alternative approach, rather than just using the outline, uh, is to scatter some points. Now this, this traced shape is just a, a uh, an ordinary shape, so you can scatter points onto it. But let's have a look at that. And the moment we've got 5,000 points, we, we probably don't need that. Let's go down to 500. And everything will work uh, just the same. Uh, so we can use the Vopsop. Uh, we can... Uh, and the reason it will work just the same is because it'll acquire UVs from 
the nearby points. So the UVs will be created on those scatter points. So the Vopsop will work just the same and everything else will work the same up until our create density volume. Let me just zoom back out. And we're visualizing at the moment the noise. Sorry, the, the, the velocity. We probably just want the density. So let's just go back and, and see what this looks like. And now we can see we're getting let me just visualize just this object. And if we go over here, we're not at the moment getting, no, that's uh, not visualizing density, that's why. So we can see, yep, we're getting, we're getting some pretty good density there. And we can always uh, change uh, what we're getting there by increasing uh, this sample distance. If I was to increase this, you can see you get a thicker density. I, I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. The other thing we were having a look at earlier was the the velocities. In fact, uh, I've turned the velocity scale down to 0 0.5 here to uh, make sure that there's less uh, that the gas doesn't rush off, the smoke doesn't rush off at high speed uh, as soon as it's emitted. And we turned off curl noise. I think we probably do need some curl noise, but perhaps at a, a value of 0.1. So let's now have a look at our, in our auto.network and see what, uh, see what this looks like. And we can see we're getting quite nice emission of smoke. Now, we talked about dissipation, and I think this is probably not dissipating fast enough. So let's uh, have a dissipation rate of, say, 0 0.8. Let's see what that looks like. And that looks that looks pretty good. So of course you can continue to tweak uh, the values here to get exactly the effect you want. Uh, you can add uh, pumps to the parts of this which you want to add random velocity to in order to give the smoke a greater swirliness. You can add verticals in order to achieve the same thing, more or less. Uh, so there are a number of ways in which you can change the appearance of the smoke, uh, create uh, random flows and eddies, and develop the look of your simulation. I'm not actually going to go through that because I think we've established the basics here of how to create this particular simulation. So to finish, a few words perhaps about rendering this out. <coughs> and let's start by setting up a camera. And I basically want this to be orthogonal. So uh, let me just try and get this more or less straight onto the camera like so, and then click camera, and let's check whether this view is orthographic. I don't mean orthogonal, I meant orthographic. We also probably want a square size because it is in fact square. And then we can zoom into it like so, so that it more or less fills uh, the whole frame. it in the center of the frame. Good. Well, I think that'll, that'll do for the camera. Uh, and then let's just put a distant light at an angle, like so. And the next thing uh, that I need to do 
is set up a render node. So let me just lay down a mantra node. And eventually this is going to render all 100 frames. And let's have it so that it's rendering not to the image viewer, but to a file. And let's call this smoke dot dollar f dot pick for example so that's going to render out to a file and let's let me just show a, a render from that so let's pick a random frame wait for it to simulate through there we go and I can alter the default uh, rendering properties when I click on this here so let's just render the current frame and I get to output it to the flipbook rather than to the file and let's just render and see what that looks like and that's uh, we see we see a couple of things about this uh, first of all there's this sort of dotting a uh, lot of lot of sort of noise we can see here and secondly there's some sort of square uh, elements here blocky blocky elements to the smoke so one way to address uh, the blocky elements is to increase the resolution of the grid uh, that we're using to simulate and that's specified in the auto.network here in the smoke uh, container we can see the division size if you make this smaller say 0 0.01 uh, you would help eliminate these uh, this blocking effect here but let's assume that we've we've got that set to the to the smallest value that we can sensibly simulate and we still have some blocks how do we get rid of them well the thing that uh, is used to eliminate these blocks is is something called filtering and that is set up on the node which is actually being rendered to create this this smoke and obviously the smoke is being created in the auto dump network but it's then being imported into this node here. This is the thing that's actually being rendered by Mantra. And if we have a look here on the render tab of this, this node, uh, and then on the shading sub tab, we see that there's something here called volume filter and volume filter width. And by default, it's set to box filter and to one. And when you have a very detailed simulation, that's usually quite a good setting because it ensures that Mantra captures all of the detail. Uh, but in this case we want probably to have a Gaussian filter and that's going to smooth things out a bit it's, it's a little bit more blurry uh, but it will eliminate uh, this blockiness so let's use the Gaussian filter and I'm going to give it a filter width of 1.2 I, I happen to know that that gives a reasonable result so let's have a look at that by rendering this see what it looks like and we can see that that blockiness has now disappeared, but we've still got the noise. And the noise we can address using uh, the other significant control for rendering volumes, which is here on the sampling tab of our mantra node. And here down at the bottom, uh, we've got a number of settings for volumes, one of which is the volume quality. And if we're doing a production render, we may want this to be up near a one. Uh, this is to do with the number of steps that Mantra is taking through the volume. Now, in our case, our volume is very thin, so we can probably afford to have this up, you know, 0.8 or something like that. Uh, but that's not going to get rid of this, this noise. The noise is due to the stochastic transparency. And the number of samples is the way you address the noise. But, of course, the more samples you take, the longer uh, the renderer is going to take. So, in general, what you would do is a sequence of test renders, increasing this at every with every render until you get to a point where you're happy with the balance between the render time and the noise. Now, in my case, I'm going to put it up to 18 because I happen to know that that's pretty much what we need to get rid of this. So let's have a look at render. And we can see now, it's still rendering very fast because it's a very thin volume, but we can see now uh, that we're getting this this noise has, has disappeared. Uh, the other thing that uh, you may uh, want to do 
is to allow motion blur and in our volume here if we go and have a look we can see well you may not be able to see it maybe but you can see yes just here at the bottom of the screen uh, there is a velocity volume so we already have velocity values so that means that we can easily add a motion blur so let me look at our output node again and if we enable motion blur we can then render and we should now see some motion blur on the smoke it's not particularly pronounced a little bit you can just see the difference there between those two so that's a few words about uh, rendering this um, I think that brings us to the end of the basics of creating this simulation. Uh, I hope that's been useful.